Welcome to Radicalize Me. It's about time for another Star Trek socialism video. Please hold your applause. I recently started another rewatch of The Next Generation, which is a requirement every couple of years, and I've come away with some new perspectives on the first season. Season one is almost universally panned. And while I agree it pales in comparison to the masterpiece the show became, my hot take is that it's not that bad. Please don't turn off the video. For one thing, it reminds me a lot of the original series. Uh, in some ways, that's not great. <laughs> like the cheap sets, hokey dialogue, and whatever this is. But it has the spirit of Star Trek at its core. Exploration, diplomacy, a little bit of shooty bang bang, and of course, space socialism. I had been pretty mindlessly binging until I got to episode 16. When the Bow Breaks. This one caught my attention, not just because, well, hmm. This one starts with the Enterprise coming across the site of a supposed lost or hidden planet, Aldea. Riker describes it using one of my favorite Star Trek tropes, list one or two real Earth things the audience will know, and then one made-up future thing. Like Atlantis of ancient Earth or nine men of Xerxes 7. Oh yeah, Xerxes 7, sure, of course. So this is some myth about an unconfirmed planet. But of course, the crew is able to do some sciencey shit and reveal the planet from behind its highly sophisticated cloaking device. Once the code is cracked, the planet appears, and the crew meets one of the hottest aliens in all of Star Trek. Two more of Star Trek's most common tropes, hot aliens and aliens that are just humans. <laughs> Here combined into one total smoke show. The people of this planet are extremely friendly on the surface, but the crew can tell something is off when they display unusual technological abilities and a lack of boundaries. Eventually, the Aldeans reveal that their entire population has been unable to conceive children for many years. So as they age, they get closer and closer to extinction. They ask if the crew would be willing to trade their children for advanced technology. And when the crew predictably says no, the Aldeans snatch Wesley and a handful of other children from the ship using transporters. The Enterprise can't beam the kids back up because of reasons. And the episode plays out as a tense set of negotiations between the crew and the Aldeans while Wesley leads the rest of the kids in bold acts of defiance against their captors. So what's the big fucking deal about this episode, I can hear you asking? Watch your mouth, by the way. You could argue that it's actually a very formulaic episode. The Enterprise encounters a <clears throat> strange new world, meets its inhabitants, who seem exceedingly nice at first, but end up having nefarious plans. And just when it all seems hopeless, the crew come up with some clever idea that's just crazy enough to work, and they save the day. But this episode in particular has some interesting implications about the in-show universe and Federation values. The first is restorative justice. All sorts of evil aliens show up throughout Trek, but it's very rare that Starfleet's solution is to just annihilate them, as tempting as that is sometimes. It never occurs to the Enterprise in this episode to physically attack the Aldeans. Well, maybe Worf. I could attach a tractor beam and adjust its heading. I think not, Mr. Worf. I recommend we go immediately to battle stations. I appreciate your advice and concern. This is not the time for rash actions. Captain, this may be our only chance. No. The Aldeans have more power than the Enterprise, but even with weaker enemies, violence is usually not high on the list of solutions for Starfleet. It's a dialectic, of course, because sometimes you have to blow shit up. And the Federation understands that. <laughs> But in this case, Picard went the clever route. They used a small periodic opening in the cloaking shield to beam down and shut off the computer that not only generated the shield, but enabled the rest of the Aldeans' powers. Some Wizard of Oz shit right there. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain! <laughs> yes, it's exactly so. I'm a humbug. Once the Aldeans were powerless, Picard could easily have destroyed them. Instead, the crew find the source of the radiation poisoning that kept the Aldeans from breeding, and Crusher is able to cure them. Why is this important? Because while the Aldeans did a really bad thing, 
the enlightened humans and androids, Klingons, Zalorians, and Betazoids of the 24th century recognized that the best way to stop them was to strike at the cause of their behavior, or what Marxist nerds like myself would call their material conditions. And this isn't about excuses. It's about what works, what's effective. You can punish people all day long, and maybe there's a place for some punitive measures, but ultimately, you have to change people's environments and incentive structures, or you'll keep getting the same results. The resolution is, of course, cleaner in a TV show than it would be in real life, but you can see how humbled the Aldeans are when they realize what was actually causing their problem, and that they don't have to steal children in order to perpetuate their society. Before this happens, the Aldeans wrongfully imprisoned the children of the Enterprise, who at first feel despair, but slowly try to come around to their new life. Wesley is too old for this shit, though. I'm 50. He gathers all the younger kids. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Wesley. And explains the concept of passive resistance, specifically in the form of a hunger strike. It's called passive resistance. We don't do what they want us to do. Right as their resistance gets started, there are two subtle but extremely important lessons about strikes. One kid is a bit apprehensive. But Wes, I do kind of like them. I think this is important because if we relate this to labor strikes, while a lot of people hate their boss, a lot of people don't. And that's okay. You don't have to hate your boss as a person to be class conscious and fight for your freedom from wage slavery. Capitalism has shown itself to be incredibly adaptable to resistance as the ruling class picks up on the tactics of the proletariat. That partially manifests as the boss putting on a friendlier face. But the capitalists will still fight to maintain their control, and you still need to fight back. The other lesson is quite simple. What are you all doing here together? What is going on here? There's a reason oppressors don't like when their subjects gather in groups of their own accord. Never fall into thinking that you and your coworkers or neighbors or anyone else you have shared interests with have no power. If you can coordinate those interests and a set of goals and actions, the rulers shake in their boots. The really cool thing about this episode is that it's not only about restorative justice and passive resistance, but the multifaceted nature of successful revolutions working class solidarity, plus seizing the levers of the economy, plus re-education. When the away team beams down, they first seize and disable the master computer. Think of the computer as the levers of the economy. It's kind of like the Bolsheviks seizing the railroads and other infrastructure. Once they've taken the power away from the rulers of Audea, they empower the working class, in this case, the children, and the crew of the Enterprise even, and then re-educate. Which, you know, I think sounds like a scary thing to a lot of us, but it doesn't have to be. Um, they show the Eldeans a better way. That's it. So there you go. Maybe not a perfect analogy, but the episode jumped out at me as a good example of some revolutionary socialist concepts in action. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you can, help us out by subscribing on Patreon or giving a one-time donation at Buy Me A Coffee. Bye now.